right, so uh, before I get into uh, the value studies, I wanna explain kind of a little bit about gouache and how it works. I'm gonna grab a brush. Uh, it doesn't matter the size, I'm just showing you, you how gouache works. And then this is my black gouache, this is my white gouache. For this assignment, we are not going to be using white gouache. Um, the reason being is that you can get a more pure black, even a better gray when you're just using only black. Um, you treat this more like watercolor. That's why, you know, gouache is considered um, opaque watercolor. Um, I'm using Winsor Newton Designer's gouache, which is pretty expensive, but um, you can pick up gouache, as I said before, um, pretty much anywhere, especially if you're just a student, you're just trying this out. Um, feel free to get any kind of gouache um, that is available to you. Um, these assignments, uh, you'll see that, at least for me, Winsor Newton, I'll use this, but it's just really the pigment um, quality is what you get out of um, a more expensive gouache, usually. Um, and then sometimes a little bit of the handling, but um, mostly it's the pigment quality. Uh, things are more rich, or you'll find that um, they won't become see-through as easily. So um, let's talk about my black gouache. Let me, I should open this. Alrighty, so I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the black gouache and how you'll use it for the assignment, and then the reason why we're not using white gouache in this. So put that over to the side for now. Um, for black gouache, why we're using it like this, oh. um, you can do a couple things. Um, if you happen to have a top or a mixing palette, I have like a chicken, oh, this is a gorgonzola cheese type of top you can go ahead and use this uh you can also use like a paper towel another spare piece of paper um it just depends on if you are going to reactivate your gouache again um with gouache just like watercolor um you can reactivate it with water the only bad part is if you're trying to make something opaque you won't be able to kind of get the same goopy mess <laughs> um like before you'll never get that fresh out of the tube kind of quality out of it. Um, so it just depends. Um, I really like using it directly out of the tube for really, really dark blacks. Um, and then um, if, you know, I was just doing kind of a tonal study, it would be probably be fine to reactivate it. Let me just put a little bit of white onto this too. So I don't have to worry about it. But um, if it comes in tubes, that's what I recommend to get the ones that come in tubes so you can get those really um, right out of the box, like most crazy opaque kind of colors. Um, let me try and draw a circle. All right, that's like not a bad circle. But let's talk about light sources and kind of what we're doing here with this gouache. So with light sources, um, you might have known this in a different kind of class. Um, you'll have to pick out where the light is coming from and uh, you'll create shadows based off of that. So let me just make a little cone. This is my what my shorthand for like the light situation. Um, and you'll see if I kind of bring this down. Um, if this was a, a actual sphere, um, it's probably going to be lit something like this. So you'll have, you know, your highlight, you'll have your midtone. Um, your midtone will be like right here. Um, this would be more of a transition. This would be probably uh, your shadow. And then uh, your cast shadow would be somewhere kind of right around here. So your darkest point is going to be this area here, right before you get to the cast shadow. Um, and your lightest point here will be, you know, that really hot white um, highlight. Now with this project, you won't be using white at all. So the way you get white is by not touching it. 
Hoo -hoo. It's so easy. Um, let me just grab, I'm gonna get some of this black gouache and play around with it a little bit. So I just wet my brush a little bit. You'll have to probably test this out. I would highly recommend, even if you like use gouache regularly, um, at least for me, I like to test it out every time just on a separate piece of paper to make sure it's the color that I want it to. Gouache will always dry, um, it depends on the brand, but um, it usually will dry darker. So <laughs> take that uh, with what you will. And you can see how dark or black this is. It's almost like ink. Now, if I add a little bit more water to it, the consistency is more liquidy, but I still have that really dark kind of color. It's starting to change a little bit now. I'm gonna get, knock a little bit more off of this. And then I also have like a napkin or something like that nearby, but let's see what type of consistency I have. All right, you can see now that it's getting a little bit more liquidy. And then I think I might go ahead and dab this off a little bit on my napkin. Get that a little bit drier. And you can see you can kind of rub it around. Now that's the cool thing about gouache is you can actually reactivate it on the paper, but that's also a bad thing. Sometimes if you need to go over an area again that's already has been dry, it will reactivate it and then you'll like swipe up your color. The whole thing will start coming back off. So you wanna be careful of that. I'm gonna just wet my brush some more, see if I can get another tonal change out of it and pull it out. It's a lot of water, Carol. So I'm gonna take my little piece of paper, I'm gonna dab it a little bit, just dab it up. And then that's actually what I do a lot. You can easily do that. And then you can kind of see how it can gray out for you. By just adding more and more and more water, okay? All right. So depending on if you do something like this, maybe you're just testing out the colors, um, you might want to uh, figure out what that amount of water is gonna look like when you get to your ball. If you wanna do a, a test ball uh, to figure out your mid-tones and things. So this is a little bit dark. So I'm gonna bring that all the way down and notice that I just really lightly went into this. I'm feeling good with this, I like that. And then I'm just gonna go back and get a little bit of water. I'm actually not gonna even, let's see if I can bring that out, soften that edge. There's a lot of techniques with gouache. You can mix wet in wet, you can mix dry in dry. But the cool part is it's kind of buildable. So I'm just gonna bring that same stuff out here. And I'm gonna leave that, this is like a kind of turning into a cool core shadow. I'm gonna come back over here, I'm gonna grab a little bit more. It's still wet, so I can still play around with it. Notice that when I go over the same area again, that it gets darker. So this is why I liken uh, gouache to, uh, kind of similar to the digital process. Like this is like a using multiply if you're in Photoshop. Bring that, go back in, that darker area. And this is just a test, so I'm not really getting too into the nitty gritty here. Let me grab like a lot more of this black and I wanna see if I can get really right underneath. And you know, it's really like when you think about it, you're like, okay, I added water. I can add more water or I can have less water. This is me adding less water. Look how black that is. Now you can use multiple brushes. Like uh, sometimes I'll use like a completely clean one. 
go back over. Go back in, bring that out. Gotta be careful not to, I feel like this mixed media paper is coming up a little bit for me. I'm, I might just go back to using that. This is like a new one for me, but um, I might go back to using my manga paper. It's, you know, relatively cheap. Let's grab a little bit of water, bring that out. Go in, grab more, lots more water. And then drag out what I have. So this is very much like watercolor in a certain way. Bring, get that back, sorry, back, stay back. And then I can just go back over some of these lines and then make them not as crispy because that was more of a drier brush. And I can just go ahead and add a little wee bit water to them to fill in those gaps. And I, I hope that you can see it, but that's kind of what we're looking for. Just um, being able to get a few things. At least in this project, what I'll be looking for is like, you know, uh, maybe a highlight or a white. Um, maybe um, just like a mid-tone. And then uh, like a shadow or some other variation. So like this would be a highlight. This would be a mid-tone like somewhere around here. And then this would be like a shadow, um, like even right around here. But I would say think about um, light, uh, medium. Hmm, I don't know if that's spelled right. And then uh, dark. So you want it to have at least three values. So you have light, medium, dark. You know, maybe black is dark, right? So I'd fill that in. But in doing this, you're getting kind of um, the idea of using the gouache and then how it's gonna feel Long term. Bring you more water, more gouache, medium. That midtone could probably be darker. I don't know. You can go in between too. Let me just pat this a little bit. Hopefully it won't come up. It's gonna, I feel like it's gonna. All right, it didn't, great. So that's what I'm thinking, like light, medium, and dark, and that is not using white, right? So don't use white for your like actual lights. Just leave it the paper color. Okay, so let's talk about if you were to use white, why am I asking you not to use white? All right, here it goes. So I'm gonna take on my palette, the black, and then I'm gonna just go into the white. Notice that it's making a gray, but it's like really like a cool gray. Also, um, the components of it, it's like really chalky looking. Um, this is why I don't want you to use gray. It just becomes really muddy or, or um, it just becomes a color in itself, uh, to be honest with you. So uh, please do not use gray uh, for this assignment. Notice that I can tell when you're using the white, I believe the white is, um, yeah, zinc white. And, um, or your white most likely has zinc in it, um, even if it doesn't say that. And a lot of times it will make it completely opaque. So think about like adding white out 
to your paint. That's exactly what you're kind of doing um, when you're adding this white. Uh, when you can achieve a really more pure gray color than some of these, uh, these and you can see how it's drying down. It's drying down darker, um, which is a little bit more deceiving <laughs> than using just the plain black. So that's why um, please do not use white for this assignment. Just uh, use the black gouache. Um, another thing is please try this out if you'd like to on your own. Uh, not an assignment, but it might just help you before you get into the next thing so you're not super surprised. 